morning. Uh, I was asked to Francesco uh, to to present today a complex case, uh, trying to use uh, our uh, CSO devices. So I tried to include as much as the devices that we have in the clinic into the same case. These are the financial disclosures. Uh, it's a case of a 22-year-old female uh, that was looking to have refractive surgery. It was a known patient of mine for more than uh, five years. Uh, she presented with a, a mixed astigmatism. Is the refraction and the best corrected vision was quite good, 0 0.8 uh, decimal. So I decided to do the full evaluation of the patient. So I started, of course, with our uh, uh, lovely uh, pyramid scans, uh, and I confirmed that the refraction was uh, quite uh, similar, as we can see here, uh, to what we have in the manifest refraction shown before. In the left eye, the uh, case was uh, showing the refraction very similar to our manifest refraction, and we sometimes fine tune uh, the refraction, and we 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 trust a lot the the refraction of the M39. Obviously, the patient had a cycloplegic refraction and cycloplegic uh, sorry the pyramids and cycloplegic refraction with the with the pyramids. So. Uh, after that, we decided to uh, go now and uh, do uh, an MS39. However, at that point, uh, uh, the MS39 that I had, I was lucky to receive the MS39 back in 2018, 19. I don't know, Francesco can correct me. And uh, that MS39 had to go because we were going to acquire our own MS39. That was an MS39 for uh, research uh, uh, that we were doing. So in those days, I didn't have it. So I used the Sirius to do the scans of the patient. And uh, the Sirius was showing that the patient had a thin cornea, uh, but a good anterior chamber depth in uh, both of the eyes. And it shows the same for the left eye. And it shows that the corneas for our uh, inclusion protocols and selection of the refractive procedure were not a good candidate for a laser vision correction, not only for the topographies, but also because we live in a hot spot of uh, haze in the Middle East. Uh, uh, so we are very conservative, especially in cases of uh, hyperopia and uh, high astigmatism, because we have more haze in those cases. So after that, uh, we uh, decided, so what are we going to do? So we went into uh, the plan of uh, toric ICLs. Uh, previously, we did iridotomies. Yes, we still do iridotomies until now. Uh, we don't want to have any uh, aquaport occlusion that it's already been reported and end up with a pupillary block in an elective procedure. So still until now, we do the iridotomies uh, 10 days, one, 10 to two weeks uh, prior to the surgery. And this is the lens that we implanted in the patient. So at post-operative day one, uh, my uh, optometrist comes uh, very concerned and say, Dr. Juan, uh, the vision, uncorrected vision of the patient is below the uh, vision that she had preoperative. Uh, and now she's showing that she has a very high myopia. Uh, I think there is a problem. And you implanted the lens with the wrong power. I say, wait a minute, let's see, let's go to the file, let's check the power of the lenses, uh, and the power was corrected. And I ask how else we can, uh, what else we can do at this point? So at this point, I uh, told him, let me see, again, it's not that I don't trust your refraction, let's take the patient to the pyramids. So I went myself, to the diagnostics uh, office, and I did a pyramid scan to the patient that, of course, it was showing the same. Uh, it's a very good optometry, so it was showing that the patient had a significant myopia. And as you can see in the right uh, side, you can see that uh, we see the marks of the uh, toric lens. So I also confirmed that the uh, lens was in the correct uh, axis for the right eye and for the left eye. For this one, but I didn't show it in this presentation, you can use also the uh, backscatter image that is in black and white and show you the marks a little bit much easier and helps you to confirm the axis, uh, the position of these uh, uh, lenses. So 
I decided, what should I do now? Uh, let me see how the cornea looks. So I went back to the series again because I still didn't have the M39. Uh, it's not that I'm blaming you, Francesco, at that point for uh, taking the toy away from me. One of the difficult moments I have to uh, agree after having such a good toy and then take it from some time. I felt like I didn't have my tools uh, anymore, but the take home home message from this uh, uh, presentation will be that also how we can manage with the Sirius and how the Sirius is still also a very good device that helps us uh, for such a complex case like this. So this is the uh, topography. It looks uh, that I have edema in the incision, the temporal incision that I do, which is expected is one day postoperatively. And this is the left eye. I say, okay, let's check the differential maps. Okay, let's confirm. So I use the, the, the infrared image uh, to see that the iridotomies were patterned. You can see the iridotomies there in the images. I do two iridotomies. Uh, and then I see the differential maps preoperatively of the tangential to see if anything was coming from uh, the cornea. I knew it was not going to come minus six diopters from a cornea, but uh, I just wanted, uh, this is my, my, my flow uh, process to do everything systematic and to avoid missing something. So here I took the slit lamp, uh, uh, the patient to the slit lamp at that point. And then uh, the eye was very quiet, as you can see in the images. The IOP was 14. It was also in both eyes, double-checked uh, by me. And the anterior chamber looked uh, a little bit uh, shallow. So I decided to take a, a metacell sponge and put fluorescein and check if the patient had a sedal. That's what I thought. I say it would have been nice also to have an MS-39 and check how the the, the position in the incision and how is the, the, the anatomy of the incision to see was there any issue uh, related that was perhaps making me lose some uh, of the acute humor uh, and making this anterior chamber uh, shallow. So I took again the patient, I went again to the series, I say I forgot to check the differential maps of the anterior chamber depth. We see the significant shadowing of the anterior chamber depth in both eyes and we I use a lot this image that is the sections comparison, the postoperative against the preoperative when we see this uh, shallowing of the anterior chamber in the right eye and in the left eye, the same. A little bit more in the right eye, perhaps that was higher than myopia in the, in the right eye. So at this point, anybody has any diagnosis that would like to, to say or any suggestion on what to do next after this? We saw the scans, we saw what we have available, most of the tools that we have available in the clinic. So this was the diagnosis that I did. Uh, uh, I went uh, a little bit against the suggestion of the glaucoma specialist and uh, because I documented it also with the UVM. And I started atropine three times a day, Diamox 250 milligrams three times a day. So next day, what I see, this is the preoperative scans and the refraction, as you can see, the mixed astigmatism. At postoperative day one, very shallow with this myopia in both eyes. Then at postoperative day three, after starting the atropine, we see how the lens start going down and the anterior chamber start forming. And as well, the refraction start going down, the myopia start decreasing to minus four in the right and to minus 2.25 in the left. Then we have at postoperative day four, the anterior chamber was almost completely formed. So I left the patient with the atropine for a month and at day number four, I stopped the diamox, but I just left the patient with atropine uh, for a month. It was an student, so I had to give her some uh, reading glasses for her to uh, uh, use during this time that she was under the effect of the atrophy. And these are the scans. You see how the myopia was decreasing now to minus one at postoperative day four, minus 150. And in the left eye, already in plano because the anterior chamber was already more uh, formed. And then at postoperative week six, uh, two weeks after stopping the atrophy, we have the anterior chamber completely back to uh, preoperative uh, values. And I have again the MS39 finally that arrived to the clinic. So I can measure properly the bolt. I can make sure that the lens was in position uh, and I can continue doing the follow-up. And I also see, I wanted to know how irregular were those uh, corneas, how, how, how not a good candidate they were uh, for uh, 
perhaps to do a laser vision correction. And the MS-39 is already identified as a borderline or keratoconus suspect uh, cases uh, where the Sirius was not uh, able to do it. This is post-operatively, of course. Okay, thank you.